Texas is defending its coastline in the only way it knows. How? A person with a good sense of humor might say, by building a wall. You can think of it as a huge barrier for protecting the city of Galveston from hurricanes and deadly ocean waves. In today's video, we're going to talk about the $31 billion mega project that will save the Texas coast from future hurricanes and storms. Stay put till the end so you never miss out on these details. Every Texan knows about the 1900 storm. When the storm hit Galveston, the entire island got submerged in water. Approximately 8,000 people died. One can only picture being entirely in the dark during a hurricane that causes the barometric pressure to drop to levels never before seen. Hearing the cries of people dying all around you in a wrathful storm while fighting for your own survival. After surviving the night, all that remains to be seen is a total disaster. They built a seawall to save the city from further atrocities, but even that didn't stand a chance against the 2008 Ike hurricane. In reaction to Hurricane Ike, Professor Bill Merrill of Texas A&M University at Galveston suggested the development of a dike. We now understand how this project got its name. The project would greatly improve the current Galveston seawall by including floodgates, giving greater security for Galveston, the Bolivar Peninsula, the Galveston Bay Area, and Houston. The barrier would protect the bay from all gulf surges and would cross Galveston Island and the Bolivar Peninsula. But the question is, how will all this work? The $31 billion Ike Dyke project will include parts like dunes, ring barriers, and gate systems. However, the main focus of the project is the gate system. The ring barrier is composed of four distinct types of gates that all work together. A wall will stand around 22 feet above the water's surface when closed and will reach the bay's bottom. A facility on the eastern tip of Galveston Island will house the system's operators to control the barrier. This barrier will protect Galveston's most densely inhabited region from the storm-related bay and ocean water. A multitude of components will work together to give protection against a 14-foot storm surge. The following are some of the primary defenses that will be put in place to protect the island. Concrete flood walls will be built with an underground wide base and an upside-down T-shape. Flood walls will be supported at a 45-degree angle by poles submerged in water. Shallow water and navigation gates will be built between flood walls to allow water and boats to enter and depart off that bayou. With the construction of small barriers above it, the seawall will be raised by a consistent 21 feet. Elevated hedges or concrete floral containers are planned for the restaurant and commercial sides of Seawall Boulevard. This will be linked by more than 100 automotive and pedestrian gates. Power for the gates will be provided from both the Galveston and Bolivar sides if either grid fails. Additionally, generators will be employed to support the operation. Once a year, the gates will be shut for maintenance. The wall could theoretically lessen storm-related harm to both people and the environment. The supporting pillars for the vertical lift gates will be as tall as 10-story buildings. According to court personnel, the flood walls will merge together like fences. Engineers are currently debating the design of visually beautiful barriers. Once the walls are closed, there will be restricted vehicle access around the island. Since the I-45 causeway will be raised over the flood walls, residents will be able to leave the island only by using this causeway. Large structures will block the views of anyone using a boat or fishing from the bay shorelines. The normal navigation will be changed. Additional training will be provided for those who pilot ships through the Houston Ship Channel. Furthermore, ship commanders will require new anchoring places while waiting their turn to enter the canal. Two rows of dunes will be built along Galveston Island's 18-mile shoreline. These dunes will be visible from the west end of the seawall to San Luis Pass. Two rows of dunes will be built along the Bolivar Peninsula's 25-mile shoreline from the gate system wall to High Island. Natural dunes on Galveston Island and the Bolivar Peninsula were damaged by previous hurricanes and tidal floods. Sand from some other place will be used to expand the beach and build dunes that will reach 14 and 12 feet above the ocean. In order to maintain a healthy ecosystem, the beach will be refilled as it erodes with sand from the dune closest to the ocean. The higher dune will assist in storm surge control. It is imperative that both dunes will get eroded by storms and time. They might partially regenerate after storms, however, some sand would be lost. The dunes will likely need to be rebuilt after every six to seven years. They will significantly change how you can approach the beach and how you can see it. The corp officials do not expect any obstacles to residents' views. The road, however, will no longer provide views of the coast. 
To reach the beach, people will either need to drive over a new road that crosses the sand dunes or across wooden platforms. Although the project looks fine and could save many lives, still experts are concerned about the environmental damage Ike Dyke could cause. Water flow between the bay and the Gulf of Mexico will be regulated by the Gate Foundations. Species like fish, shrimp and crabs might get impacted since they go through different stages of their life cycles in various ecosystems. These creatures migrate between habitats in various bodies of water using currents and tides. The gates may alter the path taken by sand in the water, perhaps altering coastal habitats as well. The decreased water flow will also lessen sea level changes brought on by the tides. Wetlands will suffer as a result of the reduced high tides and increased low tides. Lower water quality may result from the bay not flooding the gulf as regularly as it does at the moment. Another issue is that the foundation of the gates and barriers would deprive the bay bottom of habitat for the diverse and vibrant species. Furthermore, the barrier on Bolivar Peninsula would remove crucial bird habitats. One potential hazard is flooding. In case a storm surge is forecasted, the core will close the barrier. If the ocean and bay water levels increase outside the barrier, pumps will drive rainwater from city streets into the bay. These pumps are usually used to tackle minor floods. Since climate change is predicted to intensify precipitations, critics have questioned if the pumps inside the barrier would have to be redesigned to pump water more quickly. Engineers are already constructing pumps to deal with floods caused by high tides. The structure may lead to additional environmental dangers for the water and the land. Some of the barrier structures will expand on wetlands, limiting biological habitat. The gates and flood wall will occupy the area on the open bay bottom as expected with the gates across the mouth of Galveston Bay and may restrict water flow. The dunes may also have an impact on the environment. To build the dunes, the core will require billions of cubic yards of sand. And as the plan suggests, they will need more and more sand to replenish the dunes every six to seven years. Environmentalists feel there just isn't enough sand available to substitute constantly. They have also highlighted worries about contamination in sand extracted from the bay bottom. After years of discussion, Ike Dyke is approaching a conclusion in Congress. The Army Corps of Engineers approved the Dyke proposal in 2018. The Texas legislature agreed to the barrier plan in May 2021. The idea was presented to the US Congress in August 2021 for approval to be included in President Biden's projected infrastructure initiatives. He is also anticipated to sign the legislation. The greatest uncertainty in the next months and years will be whether legislators will agree to pay for a complicated system that may or may not prevent the island and ship passage from suffering serious damage during a hurricane. The area is at grave risk if lawmakers fail to find the money and no other measures are put in place to replace it. Local authorities would charge taxes and find other ways to pay their $10.7 billion portion since it requires federal assistance. The project hasn't yet fully complied with environmental regulations. Engineers will spend at least another five years perfecting the design and another 12 years building the gates if the project gets funded. They have to do deeper research on its effects on marine life and suggest countermeasures. The construction of the Ike Dyke may take several years. Installation of the floodgates alone might take as much as 20 years. Considering all the factors and limitations, we think there is still a long time before we see Ike Dyke in its final form. After all, a project of such huge importance needs deeper thinking. It requires more research and a limitless supply of money and resources to be completed within a time frame of 25 years. What do you think will be a success? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.